10 here. It is probably like midnight on Friday night and I am finally trying to edit and put up the video from yesterday. Um, yesterday was a big day. I'm uh, chair of the planning commission and we finally opened a bridge that we have been working on for quite a while and it's the first bridge in 50 years to cross over the delta and onto the island so we're pretty excited about that. So um, this video is going to be just the opening of the bridge that I was attending and showing the bridge because that's a big deal for us. Say hi Diego. Hi. Do you know that it's midnight and you should be in bed? Yeah, he's thirsty. And the reason I'm filming it so late on Friday, or not filming it, but editing it so late on Friday is today Travis had his neurology two week post surgery, which was supposed to be last week, but because he had to have a second surgery, the shunt surgery, it's two weeks post the shunt, three weeks post the craniotomy. Um, check up with a neurologist and his um, nurses, nurse practitioner assistant. And it was a pretty awesome appointment. He didn't have to have any stitches removed. He didn't have to have an MRI. He didn't have to do anything. They pretty much just said, yep, yeah, your vision checked out with the eye doctor. It's looking great. You know, your strength is back in your arm. It's looking great. The only caveat we have is we knew he was having um, inability to feel hot and cold in his right hand, but we discovered that it's all the way from his head to his foot. He can't feel hot or cold or whether something is sharp poking him or soft poking him. He knows it's poking him, but he can't tell if it's sharp or dull, and he can't tell if it's hot or cold if he's holding something. So he can feel the vibrations. He can he feels on that side of his body, but he can't distinguish, and that may be a permanent change from the surgeries he's had, but considering all the serious consequences we could have had with the surgery... Uh-oh, baby, I think just hurt his hand, so I think I'll cut it here. We were conditioned with building this bridge over the San Joaquin River. And as you know, it's one of the first river crossings in about 50 years. In fact, my husband, Ron, and I saw Michael somewhere, my brother-in-law, right there. They remember when I-5 went in over the San Joaquin River, up, up by I-5. And that's when Matthew Road used to be Highway 50. So it's been a pretty big length of time before... You know, any new crossing has happened in this area. So we're really excited. And we're really excited to do this with our partners, the City of Lathrop, because you guys have been fantastic. And of course we have our Planning Commission members who we just, we love our Planning Commission members. Diane Lazard, got to raise your hand. Jennifer, you need to raise your hand. And Tosh. Tosh, you got to raise your hand. Benny Gatto. And Mac, Mac Freeman, excuse me, Mac Freeman. Bridge, July 13, 2017, River Islands, dedicated to Mike Bradshaw for his commitment to bridge the old with the new, the city of Lathrop. There's the river that the bridge goes over. There's the pedestrian bridge. <laughs> On opening day, before it's even really open to the public, across Bradshaw Terry's crossing. Here we go, there's the Delta. First one in 50 years. It's a big deal. And that's the walk side on the left, so when I come walking with the kids, someday when it's not 90 degrees, yeah. And now we are officially, for the first time, onto the island. 
we actually crossed over and as of today or tomorrow I guess they, everybody in the public will be able to enjoy the shortcut.